su gol. Okay. I put a sense of the upload there, our presentation. Thank you. I think, I think, I'm not sure. It looks like they will upload it for us. Yeah. But so my point was. Good morning and welcome to the Youth in Mining Dialogue, hosted by the Department of Trade and Industry in partnership with the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy, as well as various government departments and parastatals. The dialogue today will be highlighting excellence, successes, opportunities for and by the youth in the mining services and beneficiation arm sectors. My name is Kondwani Panda. I'm a project engineer at Mintech and secretary of the Young Professionals Councils under the Southern Institute of Mining and Metallurgy. And today I will be your host. So the dialogue today is part of the Youth in Industry series um, that will be formed part of the DT, um, DTIC Youth Month's um, activities. Now, it aims to bring together private government institutions across all levels for acceleration and advancement of youth participation in mining sectors. They will offer, they will further outline the efforts of the DTIC and government um, at large that has, you know, implored to realize economic acceleration of youth's active participation in the mining services and beneficiation sectors. Now, some of the key discussions that we'll have today will include um, report on the participation of the youth in the mining sector, the landscape of the South African mining industry, opportunities in the mining and supply value chains, the 
beneficiation as a future of our mining industry, economic and economic funding opportunities, as well as export opportunities offered by the government, innovation and technology in the mining sector, as well as transformation in the sector, um, also to include localization in manufacturing, as well as beneficiation. But most importantly, we'd like to also get some testimonials of youth that are succeeding within that industry. Now, just to give you a bit of background in terms of the environmental scan in South Africa, it is well documented that South Africa is a developing country. It struggles with low levels of entrepreneurship. And according to the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor research results, it has shown that South Africa displayed low levels of entrepreneurship uptake by its youth. Now, in comparison to its counterparts from middle income countries in other parts of the world, this indicates that there is a clear need to actually stimulate youth entrepreneurship in South Africa by encouraging more young people to consider entering entrepreneurship space as a viable career choice. Now, the National Development Plan of 2030 also recognizes the importance of SMMEs as an enabler for inclusive economic growth and employment creation as well. Now, according to the plan, it is envisaged that the SMME sector will create 90% of the expected 11 million jobs by 2030. Now, youth represents the future of the society and its economy, right? And we are the future generation as well. So decent and productive economic opportunities for young people are critical in order to achieve sustainable growth, development, and social stability. The inclusiveness of the country's action towards growth can play a pivotal role in empowering young people, both economically and socially. Now, trade and economic development must not increase inequality by bringing benefits to only a small segment of the society, but rather it requires a specific approach that will reach vulnerable groups such as young people. And helping young people transform their creative ideas into business plans by removing barriers to entrepreneurship um, has many potential benefits, right? Which include direct and indirect job creation and the development of human capital as well as new skills. Entrepreneurship, however, is not only um, the part of helping young people achieve financial independence, right? So we need a more sustainable approach um, to actually include young people in existing value chains as well as export sectors within the process of strengthening them. And I guess by doing so, we can also address the issue around the high rates of unemployment uh, in South Africa. So in terms of our pro program today, I have panel members that will be giving us a presentation. And then after they give us a presentation, I will ask them some questions and then move to the next panel member and do the same. What I'd like to encourage all our participants is to raise your questions in our social media groups, wherever you might be attending, as well as in the Q&A on Zoom. And as you ask your questions, uh, um, once they're done presenting, we can then engage further based on the questions that you put up. So to start off the program, I'll introduce Mr. Mika Divana. So Mr. Divana has, has been... Um, with the Department of Minerals Resources and Energy since 1996. He holds a BSc in Mining Engineering, completed at Paris School of Mines in France. He also holds a certificate in Occupational Hygiene and Environmental Control at Unicorn SA of the Chamber of Mines. He's currently part of the Mineral Promotion Section at DMRE and as an Assistant Director of the Small Scale Mining, he's Experience includes um, being an inspector for the mines for occupational hygiene, and he's been working with the minerals regulation, Harting region to assist the evaluation and processing of mining permits, um, prospecting rights, mining rights, section 11 and section 102 since 2017. He has extensive experience in project management of small to junior mining projects across the mineral commodities spectrum and legislation and policy framework um, governing, as well as regulating the mining industry. So Mr. Ivana, I'd like you to turn your, um, your video on 
we can go ahead and present. And then once you're done, I'll give you some of the introductory questions as well. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, I am currently using Makuta Machaka as a laptop because mine is not working. I've got some technical challenges. Uh, thank you for that introduction, Chairperson, or oh, the Master of Ceremonies. Uh, let me kickstart uh, my presentation. Am I doing this in the form of a presentation, isn't it? Correct, yes. Uh, has it been uploaded or can I use my computer, which is on the on the next side? Yes, you may use your computer. Okay, yeah. Uh, what uh, I'm going to talk about today is small-scale mining vision 2020 and beyond. That is the topic for small-scale mining, the vision 2020. And uh, the outline for the presentation, we'll start with the introduction. Uh, the targeted group for support, Vision 2020 and beyond. Processes we are trying to review at the moment. Yes. Um, um, please? Just please, yes, please share your presentation with us. So just click the green share button. The screen share button. Uh, Machaka, is it? Inbox, let me see. In webinar link. Uh, youth in mining webinar mining three. Um, I'm not so sure where it is, where to find it. Let me check this one. Okay, no, you can proceed. Let's see. Uh, let me get someone quickly, 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 quickly. Yes, I went to your hand. No, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Hmm? Yes, it is. I don't know which one it is. <laughs> you don't know which one is your presentation? Yeah. You don't know, mate. You have to know. Machaka, Machaka, Machaka. We were using Machaka. I have it there. That is, where is the presentation? Yeah. Uh, program director, I am suggesting perhaps if we can move to the second presenter while our colleague is still trying to organize the presentation. Thank you. Okay, no problem with that. So while they're still sorting out the presentation, um, I'd like us to go to the next presenter. That would be Mr. Biso Karikana. So you can stop sharing the screen so long, Mr. Um, Davana. Okay, so with regards to Ms. Tepiso Karikana, she holds a master's degree in economics from University of Bari um, in Italy, specializing in international trade and regional integration. She has over 15 years policy development experience in various government roles and currently employed at the Department of Trade Industry and competition as deputy director mining equipment. She, she is overly passionate about Africa's industrialization. And she dedicates most of her time researching the evolution of export baskets of various African countries with the, with the vision of inventing a policy tool that would destroy poverty in Africa. Her research focus is structural transformation trade, diversity, diversity um, diversification, and economic and product complexity. During her program postgraduate studies, Ms. Kadiakana, Ms. Kadiaka has uh, an opportunity of being an exchange student at University of Lille in France and University of Economic Prague, Economics Prague in, in Czech Republic. In 2017, she was part of a team that um, received extensive training provided by the Chinese government on industrial policy and development of special economic zones in um, Tianjin, China. Ms. Kadiaka, over to you. Uh, good morning, uh, panel members. Good morning, delegates. And uh, maybe let me start by correcting that it's Tepiso Kadiaka. I can see Kondwani gave me a very interesting surname, but be as it may, it's Tepiso Kadiaka. I'll just quickly take you through the department's um, 
uh, involvement in the mining industry. I was given 10 minutes, so let me get straight to the point. I will do a very brief presentation. We'll leave more discussions uh, around quick questions and answers. I hope my presentation is seeable. Let me do this. Okay. okay, let me get straight to it. Um, in terms of the department's involvement in the mining value chain, uh, our particular focus is more towards the downstream industry. So I've done a slide here which shows, um, just try and sort out my view here. Thank you. I've done a slideshow here which shows the whole entire mining value chain so that I can be able to give an overview of exactly where the department's participation in the mining industry comes into play. We've seen that most of the time people get a bit confused in terms of what the Department of Mineral Resources participation is and what the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition is. So in terms of the mining value chain, we've got mining concentration, smelting, refining, intermediate products, which also interlink to manufacturing. On the left side, you'll see the mining exploration, which covers uh, mining linkages, which covers exploration, infrastructure development, mine development and operations, and which also covers more mining mineral processing, which goes into treatment and refining. In terms of downstream linkages, we've got the actual manufacturing, which we term mineral beneficiation. In other words, that's where, for example, your steel manufacturing will be happening. I already saw some questions around jewelry manufacturing, diamond cutting and polishing. That is where manufacturing, therefore, in mineral beneficiation occurs. We also have an, a diverse autocatalytic auto converter manufacturing industry. This is where products are manufactured just before they go into the consumer market, whether they're intermediate or their final products. We also have site streaming linkages, which speaks more towards direct and indirect services. Those are engineering and geological services. We also have those services that cover the banking and financial sector. Then when it comes to the upstream linkages, where the actual mining happens, the department's role is more in terms of supply industries, where we talk about mining equipment manufacturing. When you move to the right of my slide, you'll see that in more detail. We've got four segments in terms of mining equipment manufacturing. We support the underground and surface component manufacturing industry the mineral processing, which also includes components thereof, which go into a uh, mineral processing equipment. This also covers your materials handling, your conveyor belts, manufacturing of um, those conveyor belts itself, and then also wear and tear, which is more in the services industry. So the, it's the man, mining equipment manufacturing industry itself would also have a value chain, which is more structured in terms of where it starts with research and product development. That is where your prototypes are developed. Also component manufacturing, you'll see that I've circled component manufacturing and also the four main segments which interlinked to assembly because that is where the department's role is. We support localization, manufacturing of mining equipment. We do not play a space in terms of upstream where the actual extraction occurs. And then also the sales and distribution and after sales. After sales, I'll speak to it about more about it later on, but it speaks to more, if I can give an example where if you have bought a car, uh, when you take it for service, we have done research that you will spend probably around the actual value. So if you bought a car for a million rands, you'll spend around a million rands in its life in terms of servicing it. Whereas when it comes to mining equipment, if you've spent, let's say for an example, 15 million rands to purchase a dumper truck, as an example, you will spend 15 times the amount in after sales and service. So that's why we have recognized that as a big sector uh, in, in the support that we offer for the mining equipment industry. In terms of manufacturing of mining equipment, the question was, where are the opportunities? 
the opportunities lie in the different stage of manufacturing. So the various stages would be the actual key inputs where the raw materials are sourced. This can be in a form of iron ore that is supplied into the steel industries where there'll be production of alloys, et cetera. The alloys will go into the production of uh, steel equipment that support, for example, hanging walls in the mining uh, industry. We also look at component manufacturing as an opportunity. Uh, you know, this can be divided into three categories where you've got your standard, it will be standard in terms of bearings, sill housing, valves, screws, nuts and bolts, it's a popular one. And then also casting and foundry where we people are manufacturing axles, drive shafts, engine and cast, and then also in electronics in terms of circuits and sensors. Uh, the other one is sub-assembly where there's production of gearboxes, drive trains, braking systems, and then final assembly where we've got the actual original equipment manufacturers, which will be uh, integrating those components that I've spoken about and be manufacturing the typical damper trucks or long haul damper trucks that we see operating in the mining space. Those are your typical trucks. I'm not going to get into too much detail in terms of why manufacturing. I think there's been a lot of research that has been conducted throughout the world and also in developing economies like South Africa, why the importance around manufacturing. But let me take out um, three of the bullet points to save time of what I've indicated here to saying that where we've found that in manufacturing, the most R&D is conducted there as compared to other sectors of the economy. So when you look at the US and UK, for an example, manufacturing accounts for about 10% of the GDP. But we've seen that they've spent close to around approximately 70% of their R&D budget goes into the manufacturing sector. So that automatically tells you that there's productivity that is enabled within other sectors. And then the other one which I want to highlight is that uh, manufacturing supports um, Manufacturing supports high value services like your banking. I've included, I've talked about financial services sector. And then those sectors are heavily dependent on the manufacturing sector. The firms itself, they are customers of, let's say for an example, your big uh, um, um, banks would be customers of the, 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 the mining industries through the manufacturers. And also we've seen that obviously the Johannesburg Stock Exchange itself is highly dependent on the manufacturing industry. The other reason, you know, manufacturing is also that the government is trying to support com companies that are competitive locally, but we also understand that companies need to be globally competitive because the local domestic market can only be this small amount. But when we look at the export market, we've realized that, that there are more opportunities. So the intention is to support local manufacturers as an, as an opportunity for the domestic market, but also for them to be able to be globally competitive ex and export. So we still as government are reiterating that what the country export matters. So beyond manufacturing, the focus, we've got a very strong focus around exports. Just to bring back the case home, I'm not going to speak too much detail about mineral beneficiation and why, but to give an example of what South Africa exported in 1998, and the picture looks the same, even if you look at 30, 40 years ago and in 2018, you will see that we still are predominantly dependent on minerals. So our export basket is largely minerals. If you look at the top 10 trading commodities that South Africa is exporting, out of the 10, nine are minerals. The only one which is from a manufacturing industry is the automotive. But when you compare this with developed economies, let's say for an example, Japan, the most, the world's most diversified economy, you will see that they've got quite a very wide mix. They don't really depend on the primary uh, industry. They depend more on the secondary industry. Though, though, so they'll be having cars. Even if the picture looks the same in 1998 and 2018, they will be having more your cars. They'll be having chemicals and so forth. When you look at the world's least developed economy, the same picture, mineral, mineral, minerals. So we're saying that we need to move towards a high, higher export growth, but not only just exports of minerals, but in terms of manufactured 
uh, products. I'm not going to go into the detail of the slides. I made it very detailed so that people can take home and go through it. I will go straight into the policy interventions that government through our Department of Trade, Industry and Competition have put in place. I'm not going to speak about the policy uh, space around the mining charter because I know everybody wants to hear what are the opportunities for the youth? What is it that the youth can benefit out of this whole thing that government is doing? I'll leave that up to our de Department of Mineral Resources and Energy colleagues who will speak about the exact opportunities for the youth themselves. But to also say that we support them in the policy space, ours is to ensure that there are incentives that are put in place so that we can be able to finance the people that are interested in manufacturing, mining and mineral processing equipment that are supporting uh, the mining sector itself. So the department has put in place various incentives that support manufacturing of the equipments that I've spoken about. Um, let me just go straight to the incentives themselves, even them to save the 10 seconds that I'm left with. I will not go into detail with them. I've highlighted the ones that are relevant for the mining equipment manufacturing industry. Bear in mind, I said, we do not fund mining upstream. Department of Mineral Resources together with the Industrial Development Corporation are the ones who are finding it. We fund manufacturing. So if you're interested in, man in manufacturing mining equipment, then we can have a discussion on mineral processing or components that go into supporting the mining sector. So in in incentives are divided into five clusters. We've got the innovation cluster, manufacturing investment, services investment, competitiveness, and infrastructure. Like I said, the ones highlighted in green are the ones relevant for the sector itself. So we've got technology for human resource industry program. This is managed through the ITC. It's particularly speaking to skills, developing skills in the sector. We also have the support program for industrial innovation that speaks directly to people who want to develop, commercialize their prototypes. So let's say for an example, as a young person, let me give a particular example here. We've got a company that is run by young people who have invented a novel technology to process and recycle spent catalyst. A spent catalyst, it's a, a component in an exhaust that has platinum and in other cases, palladium, depending on the car that is being driven. So they take that spent catalyst, a used spent catalyst, a used car, they've developed a technology to recover the platinum in the catalyst itself. So they then, have received funding from the department to be supported to commercialize the technology. So they've, they are now working on a semi-commercial plant. So they will be mining platinum from a lab using spent catalyst as opposed to a version platinum mining, which we are used to in the, uh, uh, in the Northwest area and Limbobo. We call this urban mining. We also have the Black Industrialist Scheme not going to go into detail about it, but give an example of a black industrialist who is based in Northwest, who's producing nickel sulfate. One of our black industrialists who benefited from, from the mineral beneficiation industry, black owned young, he is producing nickel sulfate that goes into the electric vehicle battery pack, exporting it to Japan. So these are the type of examples that we can showcase. The other one, um, just a note to say on the Black Industrialist Scheme, you need to be 51% ex 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 greater to qualify in terms of Black ownership. The other one that I want to indicate, and which is fairly new and particularly geared towards supporting enterprise and supply development in the mining spaces strategic partnership program, which focuses on OEMs, original equipment manufacturers who have an interest uh, to support and, uh, localization in the sector. An example which we can give is work in progress that we are working with as uh, Senvik, which is uh, one of the biggest mining equipment manufacturers in the world, not even in the country, even though they are currently manufacturing in South Africa. In this program, they are identifying five companies wherein they will be training them and providing equipment for them to, to manufacture certain components. Let's say, for an example, you know, your valves which go into their equipments themselves or hydraulics, and then they will then be manufacturing those under their license 
and uh, supporting them in terms of skills development and also assuring them to, to get uh, um, the market itself. I can link this to one project we did through the Black Industrialist Scheme that was not necessarily funding the company itself, but through Senvik we were able to expose certain Black Industrialists to the Senvik um, supply chain. So not only did the Black Industrialists get uh, exposure, but now they are also supplying Senvik Global, not only Senvik South Africa, but they're supplying uh, uh, products to Senvik Global. So we've seen that it opens up the value chain even more wider. Uh, and it also supports the export uh, drive that the government is trying to push. We also have what we call the Manufacturing Competitive Enhan Enhancements Program, also managed by the IDC, uh, which focuses on providing working capital. I've seen there was a question in the chat box, even though I didn't go through it in detail, where somebody was asking about getting working capital. I think they've overcome the hurdle of fixed capital. This is a program to apply for. We also have the Export Marketing and Investment Assistance Scheme, which promotes, which help companies to promote their products to the targeted market. It's also interlinked to the sector-specific assistance program. The other second last one, which is relevant for the sector is the Capital Project Feasibility Program. This one talks about people who want to supply equipment in mining, program, mining projects in Africa. There is funding that is available when the feasibility of the projects themselves is being done. Remember in mining, the design and the equipment thereof that is going to go into the project is done during feasibility. So if you want to get benefits, you want to participate at that point in time. I've also included critical infrastructure program because we've seen that it really works when it actually comes to beneficiation, mineral beneficiation, where we have been able to support and are in the process of seeing if we can support some of the end users like your Vodacom, uh, we have opened up the first fuel cell manufacturing plant in South Africa, which is at the Dubai Trade Port. Fuel cells, where we are trying to promote the use of platinum group metals, in this case, palladium and platinum, in the use of technologies that are more you know, advanced, uh, as opposed to the traditional ones which were in the economy, because we are realizing that with the advent of uh, the electric vehicles and so forth, the demand for platinum and palladium which constitutes such a very big weight in our export basket is going to be going down. So we are in reaction, trying to mitigate those risk factors by making sure that we are able to create, generate demand for those uh, sectors going forward, for those minerals that have identified. They are not the only ones that are on the red light. I mean, even with coal, we can list quite a couple that we know that they are having challenges. Let me leave it at that and say that is basically what we do, how we do it, and the engagement can be open. We are open for any engagement. All the incentives that I've listed, they are available. More information is available on the DTIC website. Take advantage of them. If there are any questions, I will take them to my best ability. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ms. Kadiaka. I have a few questions for you. I think with regards to the other questions that have been uh, posted in the Q&A, we'll address them once all the panel members have presented. The first question I think I have for you is, how important is beneficiation in preserving the domestic market and increasing the value of our domestic sector? I think maybe like I've indicated in the uh, presentation itself, the biggest challenge is that we are going to have, we've seen that uh, our, there's a lot of exposure in terms of minerals in the export basket itself. So for us to make sure that uh, we are able to move towards an export basket that is more diversified and not too heavily dependent on minerals, we need to ensure that we move towards manufacturing. So that is linked to manufacturing itself, but not necessarily that alone, but to also ensure that as we move towards manufacturing, we manufacture products that are going to attract a higher value. I don't want to really labor on the issue around mineral beneficiation per se, but it's also just more towards products that are more complex 
in nature in terms of producing because we have realized that there's greater benefits for the economy if we produce products that are more complex in terms of upping our skills and also upping our knowledge as an economy in terms of uh, uh, production structures themselves. So it's more around the issue of moving from resource-based primary products to more a secondary. We are assuring ourselves that uh, should there be any challenges in, 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 in any mineral, I'm, I'm sure we've seen the advent of uh, high commodity prices and speculation through what has been happening uh, with COVID uh, and the realization that the questions that have been posed, whether those prices are real or not, to also pick shave, you know, the, the challenges that have been happening with pricing for commodities. If you've seen the slide on Japan, the more diversified we are, the less we'll be able to, the more we'll be able to mitigate the risk and therefore cushion our economy. Because currently you take out PGMs the whole export basket is literally empty. Uh, on the top 10, you take out autos, 99.9% is minerals. Thank you for that. Um, one more question for you as well. Is what common mistakes have you noted um, when applicants apply for the mining capital equipment incentive scheme? I, I must say I do not handle the incentive applications themselves. I come from the sector desk. There is a branch within the DTI that deals with the incentive themselves, but uh, we, are, we as the sector desk do give you know, input in terms of applications that have been received. I think the biggest challenge is also, it's always lack of information. That I, that's why I always say the information is on their website. And I've gone through it myself based on the incentives that we interact with industry on. I've seen that even with big companies, people just don't take the time to look at the requirements and what is required. So they'll find, we'll find that people are submitting incomplete applications. I mean, a simple thing to submit a certified uh, a SIP document, even though there's back office processes to verify such information, but we should always make sure that cover as much space as possible. And the other mistake is to also apply for the right incentive. You know, the incentives are there. People are sitting with things they've innovated, things they've thought about, but they do not have the information. You find that they quickly run to the Black Industrialist Scheme, whereas they spy that is made available for people who want to commercialize their innovation. So I think the most critical one from the sector desk point of view is to identify the relevant incentive for where you are is it that is it working capital that you require, or is it capital to get, uh, you know, uh, some sort of equipments, or you just really want to promote your products in South America? Be clear on your, on what you want, and then identify the right incentive. The information is always there. We, as the sector desk, are also able to advise on which in, uh, incentive will be relevant. Thank you for that. All right, um, Mr. Piso Kariaka, I think what we'll do now, you can switch off your mic and then mute yourself. And then once all members have presented, we can then have um, open discussion with the questions that are in the Q&A. Just a reminder as well, please post your questions in the Q&A, not in the comment section. With regards to the hashtag, it's hashtag Youth in Mining 2021. Again, just a reminder to post your questions in the Q&A section so that when we have a panel discussion with all the panelists, we can then get to address your issues, your concerns, and so on. Mr. Davana, I'd like to get back to you with the presentation. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Awesome. The floor is yours. All right. Uh, thank you. One is still uploading. Yes, we have successfully uploaded the presentation. Um, the presentation will be talking about um, access of youth participation in mining. But I've put it in the form of a vision and what we do as a small scale mining directorate within the DMR. Um, my, my presentation is outlined as follows. I'll start with the intro. Look at the targeted group for support. Who are the group that we're targeting? Yeah. Vision 2020 and beyond. 
the processes under review within the small scale mining directorate, including the whole DMR as a whole, the categories of support to increase access. And then I will end up with uh, the application for the mining permit, just to give, uh, because normally when we deal with the youth, um, the right type of uh, a license that is suited for artisanal and small scale mining is a mining permit, which is uh, regulated in terms of section 27 of the MPRDA. Uh, just as an intro, sorry, um, artisanal and small scale mining sector has played a very minor role in the economic development of South Africa because of the focus. Uh, the, the, pro, the, the reason why it played a minor role is the, the focus was on large scale mining. Then in our mineral rich country uh, that present uh, good opportunities for employment, social upliftment and economic growth, particularly in the rural areas when employment, normally small scale mining has been focused to rural, what you call rural areas where opportunities are very scared. Uh, scarce, sorry. Uh, the directorate has been promoting small scale mining activities in South Africa for over a decade now in various forms of support. But let me put it maybe uh, for over 20 years now, since 1999. And the interventions that we seek, that we, uh, interventions, the interventions that we have, they seek to ensure that the miners operate within a prescribed legal framework. Improve efficiency of the what you call of the uh, mining operations, protect the environment at the same time, and receive access, assistance with access to markets and create sustainable job opportunities. Sorry, Mr. Tamana. Yes. Uh, your sound is fading. I think when you turn your head, just ensure that you're facing towards the mic as you present. All right, okay, yeah. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I said that uh, just to recap, uh, it has played a very minor role due to the focus on large scale mining. And this was due to the spectacular deposit that we had in South Africa, which are seen nowhere else in the world. There is no country like South Africa in terms of the mineral resources. We are well endowed. Um, we, we, rank, we used to rank number one in terms of the gold deposits, uh, platinum reserves, uh, uh, coal, manganese, uh, 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 and um, uh, aluminosilicates. Um, just as an introduction to go forward, why small scale? What, what is it that we're talking about in terms of the vision 2020 and beyond? We want to improve the systems, uh, approach and support mechanisms to alleviating the constraints and the barriers to the ASM in the mining, minerals, and metal sector. But why small-scale mining? Because of the economic growth and investment proportion. And how do we achieve that? The economic growth and investment promotion. Um, through coordination, of technical expertise, like your geological and phys uh, feasibility studies of the project, uh, regulatory assistance. And the second part of why we need small scale mining is to execute the transformation mandate of the national government. And how do we achieve that? Through partnerships, investor relations, market access. Uh, and the last part is job creation through information sharing, such as workshops, mining in Davos, invest, uh, investment promotion, what you call events. What are the targeted groups of support that we have? What do we mean by targeted groups in terms of the support? Um, our target groups are uh, unauthorized, uh, uh, artisanal and small scale miners, those who, are, those who are operating without what you call the licenses. And the second target group is the those who are operating legally within the legal framework, but uh, their operations are suboptimal and they need assistance, be it uh, technical or uh, financial. And the third category is the first time entrepreneurs. I think the youth, uh, including women, will fall into this category, the first time entrants. 
focus on this one will be on the surface mining. We're going to emphasize on promoting what you call the youth and women to conduct surface mining operation rather than underground. However, support for underground mining operations will be considered on exceptional cases. Uh, ASM project, our vision, we want the artisanal and small scale mining project to graduate into medium and junior mining prospects. And we know that uh, South Africa as compared to other mining jurisdictions like Australia and, and Canada, uh, we, we, we very low uh, in comparison to junior mining prospects. The junior miners are very important in the mining industry because they are the precursors to the, what you call to the mining deposit chain. They are the ones who conduct explore, I mean, who discover the deposit, but they do not have the capital to what you call to develop the deposit. So what they do, they will do exploration and sell the deposit to the what you call to the large mining companies and, or, or do what we call a, a, a joint venture. So in South Africa, um, medium to junior mining uh, uh, operators are very, 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 very low. Uh, our vision also is to try and centralize the equipment management system. Uh, we also want to integrate with other spheres of government, uh, raise funding through other alternative sources. The focus will be on quality rather than quantity. Uh, as a last point on the vision, we're going to fund sustainable projects. And those which are not sustainable, we're not going to support them. We will, we will drop them. Uh, the processes under review, we're going to look, there are some processes which are under review. This is an ongoing, what you call, uh, 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 operation. The relationship with the state-owned enterprises, uh, integration with other spheres of government, the recipients of, uh, of support, uh, referring to the targeted groups, we're going to look whether we have achieved what we have aimed, what you call what we have, to, we have set ourselves to in terms of the youth, in terms of women and other groups. So we're going to review this on a constant basis. The funding mechanisms will be reviewed as well and it's, it's currently under review as we speak now. And the sustainability of the project, whether we are achieving our objectives, what we have set for ourselves. What type of support or do we have? And this, we do this uh, uh, to enable an increment or uh, an incremental into access into the mainstream economy, uh, into, the, uh, into the mining industry. Uh -huh. So the category of support that we offer to artisanal and small scale mining are things like uh, your maps uh, or the sketch plans in terms of regulation 2.2, your environmental authorization. We know that for someone to start operating, you need to get a license. And for one to get a license, you need to spend money before the license can be issued. So you need to spend money in order to draw a sketch plan or a map to demarcate your area, to show that, okay, you fall here and on A, B, C, D, or on A, B, C, or A, a B, C, D, E, F. So these things, they require professionals for one to assist. So for small scale mining, has got some funds, they receive money from the government, what we call an appropriation fund, like any other what you call a government department. In order to assist these small scale miners to, 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 <clears throat> to comply with the regulator requirement before a license can be issued. As I said, we've got an environmental authorization report, which must be done by an environmental, what you want, and then, an environmental scientist, the basic assessment report, which is your environmental management plan, uh, in some cases, if you're conducting some prospecting rights or a mining rights, you will need to do some scoping studies and environmental impact assessment studies. You will also need to do your prospecting work program if it is a, 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 a prospecting right, a mining work program. So all these uh, 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 items, we do offer support, uh, including the geological studies, such as uh, uh, literature review, the siting of ball, logs, desktop studies, the pre-feasibility studies, up until to the bankable feasibility study or the definitive feasibility studies as the Australians call it. Yeah. 
So we also assist those who have already gone through the first stage of the application process, such as uh, uh, offering of uh, financial fees, financial provisions for rehabilitation or the rehab guarantee fees, uh, training, we do it together with the MQA. Uh, project capitalization is one of the things that we also, what you call, look into the types of equipment and the machinery. Market research and analysis, we haven't done this and we don't have the capacity, but as I said in the beginning that uh, we're going to look at the integration together with other spheres of government. So uh, a, a department like uh, the DTI can be uh, requested to assist in terms of the market research, let's say maybe for the sandstone, which in South Africa at the moment, we're importing them from uh, Lesotho, whereas we do have sandstone in Kwakwa and the Eastern Cape in Matatiela. So such types of what you call of, uh, of processes like the market research and analysis, we will require other what you call state-owned companies or other government departments in order to assist us. We have also looked at uh, whether in terms of the equipment, should we lease or should we pass the equipment? Will it be feasible if we lease to a group of people like a co-op or should we purchase it for a group of people or for an individual? We're going to look at that. We, we, we are constantly looking at that. It's an ongoing process. And the last one is monitoring and evaluation of the project. So this is the forms of support that we give in order to what you call to increase access for youth, including any other person uh, to the mining industry. Let me just give you a, a sketch which depicts the, the life cycle of a mining project. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see that we've got value. It starts from zero up to somewhere. And then on the bottom side, you have got uh, increasing certainty. Um, normally, before a mine starts, somebody must discover something like the diamond rush in KwaZulu Natal. If you discover it, what do you do? Do you have the money in order to what you call? to develop the deposit, or do you need to go to someone else to give you money in order to develop the deposit? But as you can see, at the discovery stage, if you look at the value and the uncertainty, the uncertainty is very low. So you're not so sure whether what you're looking for is there or is the right thing. And the value is very low, it's towards zero. But as you move towards the desktop studies, like your literature review, citing of the boreholes, conducting a geological, what you call, a study, uh, you will see that the value has increased a little bit if you look at the left hand side. That uh, if you take your arrow from where there is that uh, 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 that star, the red star, to the left hand side, you can see that it has moved from the discovery upwards to the desktop study. And the, the certainty of the deposit is increasing. You, you, you're getting so sure that whatever I'm looking for is there and I'm not so sure about the quality and the distribution and uh, the way in which it's, uh, it's, 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 it's deposited on the ground, whether it's in the form of a veil, it's shape, let me put it that way, the shape and the size, whether it's Sorry, a veil, it's, uh, uh, whether it's, a, it's a bedding plane, yeah. Just Hello? a reminder Hello? to, yes, just a reminder to wrap up. Um, okay, okay, okay. You contain the time, yes. And then you go the pre-feasibility pre study and this study tells you also uh, the type of funding that you will need, uh, whether you will need equity, whether you will need equity plus debt, and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and complete debt in terms of product, what you call construction and mine production. I have given you a typical mining process for a mining permit because it's applicable to small scale mining. The process requires the following. You need to have a sketch plan, as I said, the details of the land or the area, Financial and technical competence, you need to have documentary proofs of these two. Where are you going to get your finance? Do you have someone who will run your mine? You provide details of the minerals and the quantity thereof. The prescribed fee of non-refundable is 100 rand. Certified copy of the certificate issued by the Companies and Intellectual Property Commission, which is the DTI, or ID copy if you are uh, applying as an individual. Copy of the resolution if you are acting in a representative capacity and the environmental authorization in terms of NIMA of 2008. And the most important thing in terms of the mining permit is the environmental authorization. 
including the basic assessment report. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tavana, for that. Um, before I ask you the questions, I just want to actually notify them, um, the attendees that the presentation and recording will both be made available um, through the DT, um, DIC's desk. So yes, you'll get both the presentation and the recordings. So I, the first question I have for you is, does the DMRE have um, a youth in mining incubation program? A youth? Youth in mining incubation program. Do they have um, such a program in place? Yes, I, I I think we do have it, but we are uh, linking it with uh, the women in mining. Currently, we have just uh, launched a, a, a women in mining project in the northwest, um, but it's not running concurrently with the youth in mining project at the moment. So we we don't have a specific one for the youth, but we're moving towards that. Yes. Okay, thank you. And what nine financial services and programs um, does the department offer to new participants in the industry? Non-financial support is guidance and advice. And through guidance and advice, normally, um, let me see, it's number six. Things like if you come to us and ask for assistance and we couldn't, we, we, we can't offer you financial support, we do, however, assist one in terms of uh, drawing the sketch plans. Like we will go to the field and go to uh, get coordinates using the GPS, draw a sketch plan and compile what we call an environmental authorization programs. These two allow you to lodge or to put an application for a mining permit. And we also assist because our application system has gone online since from 2014. So we use um, a software called uh, uh, Samrat Online. We've got a portal which is called Samrat Online. System. Yeah. But it's a bit cumbersome, it's not user friendly. So we offer that type of assistance for those who do not have access to IT or the computers um, in order to what you call, to compile that detail and lodge that application for the mining permit. Awesome, thank you very much. So now I'll move on to our next um, panelist, um, Ms. Wongiwe Mabusela, and she's the Director for um, Empowerment Transactional Assessment. So background around Ms. Uh, Mabusela, she has an MBA qualification with the University of Cape Town, um, an EDP um, with Vets Business School, um, a BA with um, Water Sisulu University, and a certificate for executive MBA global network in digital innovation from Fudan University, Shanghai, China, and certificate level five Mandarin Confucius um, Institute. Her experience includes, amongst others, um, recommendation to form a, the Provincial Procurement um, Council, which is PPC, in the department to ensure the opportunities and barriers to entry are discussed um, by a tripartite structure ensuring that mining licenses are granted with disadvantaged individuals and partners in the transaction. So I'd like to open up the floor to Ms. Bongi. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director. I hope, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Good morning, uh, colleagues, uh, to the panelists and the attendees of the conference. Uh, uh, I, I just want to highlight that we will be talking around opportunities in the mining industry, uh, using procurement and uh, as a lever for that. So the question I've put on the screen is, can South African mining industry using procurement as a lever surprise South Africa and the continent. I'm asking this question in the context that, as you will know that if we want to focus on the transformation, we cannot speak transformation without speaking about procurement. 
procurement and transformation, they do intersect. And for us as a department, we have taken an initiative to refocus the transformation agenda. Uh, as you will know that in light of COVID-19 and uh, the general state of SMMEs and entrepreneurs in the mining industry, most of these entrepreneurs, youth entrepreneurs, youth businesses, women businesses, were facing some key challenges. And as a department, we have taken some initiatives and I'll talk about those initiatives. Just to, 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 to highlight the mandate of the department. The mandate of the department is around economic growth, job creation and transformation. And looking in terms of the MPRDA, our primary objectives are to ensure that we redress the historical social economic inequalities and ensure that there's meaningful participation and HDPs, they do benefit in the exploration of these rights. And also the objects of the mining charter, we want to ensure that we enhance social and economic welfare of all South Africans to achieve social cohesion using procurement as a lever to achieve that. Because as you have noticed, most of the communities, they are up in arms saying that they cannot watch trucks passing in their backgrounds or their communities without them being part of this. And they are right. And also, if you look at our youth, we've got youth, skillful youth that have businesses, but they kind of watch activities, they are not participating. So as the department, we've got... Uh, the mining charter that ensures that we want to promote inclusiveness and sustainable growth and competitiveness of the mining industry. And um, we, we have said as the department for this transformation to happen, we need leaders and people that believe that something is wrong. Because if as the department or the mining industry, we don't believe that something is wrong. We will not have the agility and the drive to make sure that youth companies are involved in this space of procurement. Our observations and the data in front of us, mining company is spending around the region of 500 billion in the procurement spend per annum. And we are saying we've got youth in South Africa. You've got capable youth in South Africa. Where are they playing? Just to talk about, uh, to refer, to quote this, uh, my favorite, uh, one of the academics, Alfonso Sweat, who says a business that has no social mission has no reason to exist. Whatever affects one directly, affects one indirectly, so says Martin Luther King. As the government, as the department, the metrics that we look at for transformation is we want, we are actually ensuring that we create wealth through these youth companies. We are eradicating poverty through ensuring that we take youth companies and they create jobs in those communities where mining operations are happening. We are also in a process of building a digital platform to ensure that there's access to these opportunities and inclusion so that it is not only someone who knows somebody in the mine who can be included. Now, what is the approach that we use? Our approach is driven by, we first start by taking the entrepreneurs and go on a fact-finding mission. 
where we are, we drive conversations and engage their minds and allow youth owned companies to pitch. After that, we allow these entrepreneurs to engage the minds, the end users in the minds. Let me highlight this first. During the first engagement where youth owned companies pitch, we do have procurement heads, your contracts lead in the mining industry, your supply chain managers, all the people that are involved in supply chain together with the end users. After that uh, engagement, we let the conversations to continue without us interfering as CMR, but we have created a platform. But afterwards, once opportunities have been presented, because we want to see where are the opportunities in the mining industry, where youth companies can play, we allow a process whereby once the opportunities have been presented, there's an engagement without us as CMRE, we then call the mines and the entrepreneurs to give us feedback. This for us is very important so that we do not end up doing talk shops following, we, we do not end up not following things through. So we ensure this through these uh, workshops or what I call black industrialist program workshops. We have started them in the department, we are continuing. And, and before you perhaps ask, how do you become part of this? We receive profiles from youth owned companies, black owned companies, startups. Our approach is to do a preliminary due diligence to first see if you meet first the, 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 the business criteria in terms of, are you participating somewhere? or having an interest in any business or have done something because we want to separate the business people from job seekers. So we do that process to ensure that preliminary due diligence is done by the department before we can call you to come and pitch. The second initiative that we are doing on the next slide, sir, is um, the digital platform. I'm happy to say that a youth female owned company together with uh, Accenture have partnered to formulate a digital platform. It is in its MVP stages at the moment. They are trying to onboard some early adopters in the mining industry to ensure that we have a platform. What is this platform for? This platform, we want to see inclusiveness in the mining industry, inclusion of these SMMEs. We want to see transparency, where you know that there is an opportunity and everybody has got an equal footing to be able to put his or her bidding documents. We want to ensure that there is inclusive development. We want to ensure that also there's no interference that you need to know so and so before you get an opportunity in the mining industry. So as the department, we are helping entrepreneurs grow their digital presence and ensure that they will become resilient and successful in the mine and also the mines to be efficient in implementing the mining supply value chain. We are also want to ensure that the businesses, they move beyond the mortar and brick location. They are online. I think COVID as much as it's a painful thing, but for us, we see we have taken an advantage. And we are happy that platforms like this, Accenture has taken an initiative to partner with a 100% black company with female and youth, part uh, and youth participation, where they will co-create this platform for all of you to participate 
for all of you to be involved in the mining value chain. You do not need to know an official from DMR to be called, nor do you need to know anyone in the mining industry. As long as your business case and proposal meets the criteria, you will be given an equal opportunity to, 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 to access the, the opportunity. So as I've highlighted, we want visibility of opportunities. We don't just want visibility. As the department, we will monitor the participation and the inclusion so that we see all these core commodities. We have black youth-owned companies participating. Uh, for us as the country and the department, it's very key that we have a competitive mining industry. So we reduce the supply chain dynamics to ensure that there's competitiveness in the mining industry. Now, how do we overcome these hurdles? You need to be proactive as the, the department. We need to enjoy, ensure that all the relevant stakeholders like yourself, the Department of Trade and Industry and Cooperation, my colleague there, uh, Tepiso, uh, and uh, IDC, your NEF, NEF, so that if you have an opportunity, you lack funding, there's a, a funding institution that can fund you. So ours is to create access to markets, and we are bringing tools through this digital platform. Before the digital platform, we are ensuring that we are calling companies to come and pitch. And we need to collaborate, to work together, so that we can move our country forward and ensure that there's implementation. Now, if you look at key takeaways in this uh, workshop, is that we have said we need you to participate. We need the visibility of opportunities. We need you to be included in the economy so that you do not see opportunities in the mining industry, especially around procurement, and you, you ask yourself, how best can I participate? There will be a digital platform. You will be informed when it's launched. Actually, when we started it, we had um, Minister Mandashe being the one who told the industry that we need to digitally transform the mining industry to reshape it to ensure that it delivers to South Africa at large. As I conclude, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Nelson Mandela once said, poverty is not natural, it is man-made. It can be overcome and eradicated by actions of human beings. Overcoming poverty is not a gesture of charity, it is an act of justice. Let's go out there and conquer the world. And transformation is continuous, it's not an event, it is a process. So as the department, we shall ensure that we keep on and, and uh, ensuring that mining industry indeed transforms. Thank you, the program director. Thank you very much um, for that presentation. I think looking at some of the, um, well, some of the messages in the chat as well as in the questions as well, I noticed that there is actually a need for people to get their business advertised and business out there. So I'm just wondering, is there a central database that companies would need to register um, on in order to actually access opportunities within the various um, mining companies? Thank you very much, Program Director. We, each and every company has its own database. The reason we are formulating a digital platform is to exactly to come out of that barrier where you've got to register in across 100 mining companies. So the digital platform, which I've just spoken about, is going to ensure that you just register once you are onboarded once, then you can be able to transact in, in any mining company in South Africa. So we are formulating that through the digital platform. Thank you. Awesome. And then the last question, has the DMRE also finalized um, a policy on artisanal small scale mining? Uh, I think my colleague who just spoke before me will be better placed to answer that one on artisanal small-scale mining. Awesome. But so we'll come back to, to it. 
Yeah, yeah. So we'll come back to you. So we have a last presentation from um, Mr. Max Lichaba. And then once he's done presenting, we'll open up the floor to all the Q&A questions um, that are coming through. So to introduce um, Mr. Lichaba, he's the CEO of Lichaba Mining. And he'll take us through some of the success stories um, within his company as well. Mr. Max, over to you. Nadia, how are you? I hope everyone can see me. Yes, you may proceed. Thank you. All right. my, my, my name is Max. Um, I'm, come, I'm from a company called uh, Java Group of Companies, actually. Uh, this company, we started first 20 years ago. We started with this little small uh, jewel of manufacturing in the free state. Uh, but, um, you know, I always had, um, I always had the, 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 because I grew up in the mines in Virginia. And I mean, people who know Virginia, they know it's actually a mining town. So only so things that I, only thing I saw was this mines. And I always wonder, what can I do? I don't want to work in the mine, but what can I do? Now I got lucky, I got enrolled in this um, training program, Harmony Jewelry School. Um, from there on, I started my business. We started um, uh, uh, manufacturing jewelry. With, with, with that time, um, um, and then the DTI came on board and helped us, I think, to, um, to export the jewelry. That was very good for us. Now, um, um, why mining really? Why mining? Um, it started really uh, uh, because of the bottleneck that we had then. While we were exporting jewelry, we always had a problem of meeting the requirement of the client because you'll find out they will tell you 5,000 rings on them, I need maybe one carat diamond. But when you go out, you can't find that. You always um, um, run short in terms of the delivering of that order. So I realized that there is a need of one to get really into the mining sector, because if I can control that, if we are now in the middle of, uh, of, of this, where you now have to go look for products, uh, the stones, cut and polish, may put them on the rings and sell them. And you can't really always have to, you know, a thousand shot, you know, this shot. I realized that this is a really big problem. So that's why mine, we started into mining that we went into mining because we had a bottleneck that we, we didn't know how to overcome of manufacturing because as a, as a goldsmith by profession, you manufacture, you cut and polish and you're expecting to sell and you're expecting when you get the order from overseas especially to deliver that in full. So we always come back with questions and this and that. So I realized that um, together with my team that I think it's about time for one to really, really, really venture into mining hub. And that's why we went to uh, mining. So the mine started really um, uh, also uh, in, in Kimberley. Why? Because we, 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 we realized that uh, I understand diamond, I understand gold. And I thought, uh, I think the only interesting thing Gold to mine it, it's to, to really be very stressful. And really what we need, it's, it's, it's really getting hands of this diamond. So I then um, went into a, a diamond mine. So uh, it's in Kimberley, it's based in Kimberley. This is our first mine. And um, um, I think so far so good. I actually, a few days ago, I just came back from overseas. Uh, with the partners now looking at the mine, uh, seeing the mine and saying, how can we come in? How can we get some of uh, the cut and polished stones from you? And so on and so forth. So I, I, I think it was really good for us to, to get into this. And this is our first 
mine and um, um, in the future we're hoping to actually get into coal mine get into manganese but that will come also as as as, as time goes and i think uh, uh, as the mining uh, sector is concerned we realized as a young person to really really get into uh, mining it was very very difficult very, very difficult. Even if I have, I have had so many things that I've done and just to get into uh, the industry, it was difficult. And I can imagine young people who are listening to, to this and who are, and, you know, who are in different towns. And when you get to those towns where these people are mining, they, they are really messed up. And you look at the young person there, and um, 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 you know how will that person really, really get to to benefit into this big uh, mine? I mean, because our 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 country is sitting on beneficiation, sitting on mines, and I think uh, it's good for also our department to, to have initiative like this, to try and push young people to say, we, we actually, you are not forgetting. So, um, um, and I think um, when we started uh, uh, doing this in terms of just applying and in doing all those things, you know, it took us long, but we are here. We, 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 we are about two, two years now in it. And we are excited. We've just gotten approval now for our second diamond mine, which is good. Um, uh, but I think this one we're going to have also different partners coming on board and trying to help. But as a goldsmith, as a jeweler, to me, it's just a value chain. Um, to me, it's uh, it's just um, you know we need to really supply that need that you know to the end. Uh, we we before COVID we were, we were almost supplying uh, about eight eight to nine different countries with our products, uh, polished cut and polished jeweler make uh, jeweler making uh, our products. Now uh, we realize that of course now with COVID things have everyone everyone is crying, but um, I think still young people can really be part of this amazing thing venture in terms of uh, 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 youth in mining. It's, 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 it's really uh, 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 amazing. Now, um, I, I, I remember when um, someone uh, was asking me um, uh, to say, but Dichaba, with, with what you've, you've, you've accomplished, why are you getting to really mine? And when I, I, I really found out how difficult and how hard it is to really um, get into this as a, a young South African man, I realized that um, there should be something that we do for, for young people out there. As a, as a person who comes from a, you know, a, a, a town that is small as Virginia, knowing how the town looks like, knowing the opportunities that you find there. We came up to say, we need to create a forum as, as, as youth. This is not a forum, this is a forum for youth. This is, speaks to young people. Uh, uh, this is called Youth in Mining and Construction Sector. Now, uh, this is it's really, it's, it's controlled by us. Uh, uh, for the first time now, it's not controlled by any, any, any government institution, it's controlled by us. We are grouping ourselves because I realize that um, um, divided, we can't do anything. If as a person, I'm now where I am and I think certain things, even now, I mean, when you go to certain things, go to also those sites where there are a lot of uh, uh, people who are who are really uh, unemployment. They really, it's really sad. So we created this organization to help young people who are really 
saying, um, I might not own my mind, I might not own my construction company, but what I would really want to do is to supply uniform, to supply safety wear, to, to, um, to supply trucks, to, 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 you know, all those things. We would like that young people to come together. We come together, we group ourselves. Of course, there will be different um, um, angles there will be uh, different um, uh, 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 ways of each person being comfortable to enter into this organization. So we'll have a, 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 a portion there for people who are already mine. We'll have a portion there for people who are emerging minors. We'll have a portion there for people who are, um, are really now saying, um, I've studied um, 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 engineering, but I don't have work. I don't know where to, to find work. And this will be a platform for put your CV there, be able, disabled people who are saying, I'm disabled, but I want to get into this industry. So this will speak to those all those people and it will try and, and, and solve these problems that we find ourselves in, in South Africa, especially as young people. Because if you look at... Um, uh, uh, in this mine towns, there are a lot of people who are eager to try and say, you know what, I've got transportation. I would like to, to, to transport people from here to the mine. But, you know, we, we, we don't group ourselves. We are scattered. So this organization is going to serve that. It's going to really try and promote um, and, and young people to even come to you, government, and say, here we are as young people, one voice. Give us opportunities. Let's see these opportunities. Let them be visible to us because they, we hear that, and, and I have to say, we hear that there's this opportunities is that, but when you really go to those things, it's so hard. As a young businessman, as an entrepreneur, I understand. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm really talking on behalf of all those people who are who are locked in there, who really can't stay it or who we know you go to they sing, we find you when you get there, it's another problem. When they, you know, so if we can group ourselves as young people, if we can come together as young people and say, This is us, government, please listen to us. I think we will win. So this organization, um, it's a very new organization. After also speaking to having a meet, couple of meetings with the DTI, we realized that, you know, um, something like this for young people is needed. So this, we're going to partner by with, 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 with um, CEDA, we're going to par partner with different stakeholders um, to try and make sure that this becomes success. So please, young people, if you want more information, please check out their phone, that number. Let's see how we can, let's group ourselves. Um, and next year, when we have this summit, we will have a unity of young people and say, this is our cry. And we'll have a one, one voice, we'll have one body that will try and um, deal with each problem as it comes. Remember, the, 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 the mining sector in uh, South Africa and construction sector, they're very, very important, very, very important in our economy because they are holding our economy. Why are we, as young people, are not grouping ourselves to try and get these benefits? Why are we, uh, as young people? Because as individuals, it will really be hard. Like I said, for me, I don't even know how many young people, are, I, I tell you, I don't even know how many young people are into mining right now who are not front, front, uh, you know, fronters by, you know, white men who sit in there and saying, because you are black. Someone who has 100% control in terms of mine and um, and then build mine from, uh, from scratch. I understand that's very really difficult. And if there, is, there are those young people, let's come together. If there are young people who are looking for, 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 for um, 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 uh, um, work and um, they are uh, engineers, let's group themselves together. And thank you guys for everything. And if you need more information, uh, you will follow that link. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lichaba. So as, as, as mentioned, the presentation will be shared and you will get contact um, details for the presenters as well. 
I think I've seen a lot of requests with regards to contact details for our panelists. So the first platform I'd like to encourage you to uh, actually approach, please go on LinkedIn, um, search for their name and surname. You should be able to connect um, with all the panelists that are present today. The other option is once you get the presentations as well, they'll have contact details of the panelists so that some of the questions that you have, if they're not addressed today, you can still do a follow up. In terms of how the questions will go, we'll try and answer as many as possible. Questions that are not answered um, today, they will be answered, so they'll be typed out and given to all the participants so that you can also see that your question were addressed. Some of the questions will be typed live um, on the platform, so everyone is, has access to that. Some of the questions will be answered live as well, so we'll try and then facilitate that. In terms of um, contact details, from a website point of view, we have www.dmre.gov.za. That's www.dmre.gov.za. We also have www.thetic, which is thedtic.gov.za. One more time, www there, which is thedtic.gov.za. And as I mentioned, more details will be shared um, with the presentation as well. So a question for you, Mr. Dichaba. So in, in reference to the diamond miner, how did you go about applying for mining rights? And what was the process that led you to owning a mine? Okay, thank you very much. Um, I mean, I think uh, also the, our our panel they uh, the virtually just I mean I mean they work with this, so they they really said it. How can one really do that? But uh, all I'm just saying is um, it's a very you must be ready for it. It, it takes long, um, but I think if you really want to get into this, you will. You, you will. I mean, um, I think uh, for waiting for everything, we took about um, almost eight months. And even when it, it, you, you get that, uh, you then now still need to go to your uh, pu public participation where now you need to introduce yourself to the communities because remember, um, uh, there are, there are people who are going to be um, and, and staying close to that mine. They must be informed. Maybe um, as well, the people who have businesses there, they must be informed. So you have called a meeting. You need to introduce yourself. All those things. It's, it's really time consuming, but um, I think with time, you, 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 you're able to do it. So I think what, what just comes to mind is, for someone that's clueless in terms of venturing into that space, they might not know where to start, who to approach and so on. Did you get any form of guidance, mentorship and support to actually get your business going? And if so, how can other youth that are interested in you know, owning a mine or getting into entrepreneurship access that kind of um, assistance as well? Okay, sir. Thank you. Um, to be honest, no, I didn't really get any mentorship or, or so because that was still already a manufacturing jewelry. So I, it was just too close to me to try and do it because we're always running short of this. And, you know, it was just there for me to, to, to get it. But um, I, I must say to people who really want more information about this, they can go to DMR. They're everywhere. I think, especially on this mining, mining towns, they are there. Find out more in terms of that. Um, I think when you get there, this is a consultant who will, who will speak to you very nice. Uh, um, I know in Kimberley, they speak to me very nice, welcome me and find out what do I want to do. Uh, to be honest, at first I was I was all over. I was very confused because I didn't know what is what, my permit, my rights, you know. So someone, a consultant, took me in and said, this is how they work. Now, there's this, there's that, there's that. Like uh, uh, the, uh, one of our panel, they say the smallest for young people is mining permit and then there's other, uh, other stuff. So um, they explain to you all that. And then you look at yourself and say, where do I fit in here? 
Where do I want? What do I want? So it, it really depends on the person. Why are you in life? Do you have partners? Because other things, they, 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 they require more money. Uh, you need to, 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 to wait a little longer. You need to make a lot of tests to try and get to that. So if you have a muscle, then you go for, for something that is more higher, but you know that, you know, and something that is more expensive. And also uh, the amount that they want for rehabilitation, um, it's more. So you, you look at yourself, you look at where you are. If you just want to get into a mining and you think, uh, especially now talking to young people, um, here, if you really want to get into it, I think mining permits start there. You know, assess yourself. If you have more power, then you you, you start moving from there. Awesome, thank you. So I'd like to actually invite all panel members. So what I'll request from you is to keep your cameras on. Um, you can mute your your um your mics. If there's a specific question that you'd like to respond to, um, say a feature there to raise your hand. So raise your hand and then you can go ahead and then answer that um, specific question. So just to recap on the panelists that we have, we have Mr. Piso Kadiaka, she's a deputy director, um, primary, primary mineral um, processing at the DTIC. We also have Mr. Mika Tavana, assistant director, small scale mining and um, from Department of Mineral Resources and Energy. We also have Ms. Bongiwe Mabusela, the Director, Empowerment Transaction Assessment, also at the DMRE. And um, our last panelist, which is um, Mr. Max Dichaba, the CEO of Dichaba uh, Mining. So I'd like to invite all the panelists to get their mics on. We'll go into some of the questions that were sent by um, our attendees. So how I'll do this, then I'll, pu I'll put up the question. As I mentioned, if it is relevant to you, please then raise your hand or you can just unmute yourself and go ahead. So I'll just go from, from the top. So this first question was from um, Nigel. So the question was, I want to find out information about the three mines in Kaima area for our local, for their local people because they hardly get um, jobs that side. So they're wondering why the DMRE can't permit a license for such mines. Um, he stays in of Eda and is the youth leader of Kaima. Any taker for this specific question? Can you hear me? Yes, you may go ahead. Yeah, can you repeat the question? We were struggling with what you call with the with the with the sound. Can you repeat okay. the question? Yes. So the question is around the three mines in the Kaima area. So there is no job opportunities basically in the Kaima area, and they're wondering why the DMRE can't permit a license for such mines. The DMR is doing what for for, for the license? Why the DMRE cannot permit a license for such mines? Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. Yeah. Um, normally, for a license to be issued, you need to comply with some certain requirements. Uh, for a mining permit, uh, I have outlined the, what you call the requirements. If you don't um, comply with one of the requirements, then you won't get a, what you call the approval for the license. Yeah. If it is a big license, like we have got two types of license for mining. It's a mining permit for the small ones, and the mining right for the big boys or large scale mining companies. So in terms of the large scale mining companies, there are statutory requirements that you need to comply with. Like the social labor plan, you draft it and submit it to us. We evaluate it. And then we agree with you that, okay, you need to make some amendments or it is right here. Yeah. EIA as well, the environmental authorization, you need to go through the whole process of public participation see if there are no objections and everything. If uh, we reject it, you can appeal it to the, what you call, to the Department of Environmental Affairs. But if the environmental authorization is granted, then there is no need for us to what you call to deny you the license. We need to find out exactly what is it from the complainants 
uh, that is preventing the license to be issued or to be granted or to be approved yeah uh, up until you say something about it it is very difficult to point point to re okay since you are not getting the license from Mpumalanga region or from northwest then you can lodge your complaints you can escalate them to to pretoria to head office but we need to find out first what is it exactly what is so thank you very much um, for the response. The next question is from um, Sazini. So the question goes, hi, I'm Sazini um, from Mintech. I have a few questions around artisanal mining in South Africa, specifically gold, mine, um, gold artisanal mining. Could you please advise on platforms available to South Africans looking to pursue this industry? And the second question is, why is the DMR, what is the DMRE doing regarding the criminal aspects of artisanal mining industry, which makes it difficult for legal artisanal miner to enter the market. Chairperson? Uh, yes, go ahead. In terms of the artisanal and small scale mining, I think it is directed to us as the small scale mining directorate. We have embarked on a process since 2019 of repealing section 27 of the MPRDA, the Minerals and Petroleum Resources Development Act of 2002 as amended because uh, the section by itself was creating a barrier for small scale miners or artisanal small scale miners to thrive. So we collapsing the whole section and we have introduced a, a new policy called artisanal and small scale mining policy, uh, which is currently uh, being gazetted and it has been sent out for public comments. But I don't know, because of the COVID, we were supposed to, 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 to have finished around about June, July, but I think it's gonna be postponed because of this uh, a hard lock, uh, lockdown, what you call regulations. But we, we, we have a policy in place, it's in process, and we hope to finalize it if something unforeseen happened, like, uh, your, your, your pandemic disturbs us uh, to finalize it before the end of this year, ASM. So there we have got a clear definition of artisanal mining and small scale mining. So we're going to have two types of permits, which will be easy for the new entrants to be able to what you call to apply artisanal small scale mining permit and small scale mining permit. So we do have a system in place, yes. Fantastic, thank you for that. The next question is from um, Rankadi. The question is, what is being done in rehabilitation sector of mine to help mitigate the negative impacts on the environment? What is being done in order to mitigate the negative impact on the environment? Correct, yes. Um, we do have a dedicated, at all regional offices, we do have a dedicated component of mine environmental management subdirectorate, which reports to the regional manager. Normally, that directorate, when you supply, when you apply, when, when you forward the application for a mining permit, a prospecting right, or a mining right, you also at the same time lodge the application for environmental authorization, which is environmental management studies, and it gets evaluated. And what we do during that process, we refer uh, your, your, your application as well to other government departments like uh, Department of Agriculture, Land Affairs, Water Affairs, uh, Heritage Resources, uh, and what's the other one? Water and Sanitation. Um, but it's about six of them. Yeah. Uh, so they also give us their comments and say, no, we don't think uh, mining will be able to be to lead to ecological degradation. So we, we get comments both from other government departments, including the interested and affected parties. If mining is going to take place next to you or to your homestead, you are listed as well as an interested and affected party. So during the public participation process, which is done through advertisement on the radio and the flyers and da 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 da, da you are uh, uh, required to go there and uh, listen to the project description and uh, uh, voice your what you call your concerns and they must be written down and a register must be created and those things must be attached to the environmental management program so yes i think yeah yeah 
I think we do have something in order to what you call to, to mitigate that what you call that effect. Awesome, thank you. There is a comment actually um, from Tandega that says, well, Tandega suggests that um, the department, the DOE and the DMRE make tours for learners and students to gold refineries, mining sites, chrome processing plants, and even where end product is made in fact um, for the whole value chain. I think this is actually a good comment because one of the things that we can benefit from um, the site visits to promote interest within the mining industry, as well as allow learners to start having innovative ideas in that space. So far, is there any program in place that um, looks into this, which is the site visits for learners and students? Yes, we, 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 we do have them from time to time. Like for example, just before the, uh, the COVID, uh, the Houghton Regional Office, we, together with the, uh, the head office here in Pretoria, we organize a trip to uh, Gos, if not Sivania, for the whole uh, uh, operation process of the mine, starting from uh, 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 where the, the, the sunker shaft and where people are mining, uh, materials are coming, all those processes. And we were targeting the standard nine or what, what they call them, standard nine, standard nine, grade, grade 11, grade 12, yes, yeah. We do have those, what you call those programs, yes where we target some certain schools, especially from disadvantaged areas, but we don't have to do it only on disadvantaged areas. We need to do it on all schools, yeah. We do have that program, yes. Thank you very much. So just to also um, give a notice to the participants, the way I'm actually addressing the questions, I'm addressing them from the top. So first come, first serve basis. Um, now I'll just pause a bit on the Zoom questions. We also have some um, YouTube questions. The question from YouTube from Gideon, um, I have to own a title deed to apply for mining rights. If you have a title deed, do we have the right to apply for a mining right? Did I get that correctly? No, do they have to own a title deed to apply for a mining rights? Or can they apply for mining rights even though they do not have the title deed? Yes, you can apply for a mining right without a title deed. What happened is... Uh, uh, in uh, 2002, when he promulgated the NPRDA, all the mineral resources of South Africa reverted back to the state. The state is the custodian. So you don't have to apply to someone else, to Van der Waals' farm or Van Toner's farm. Uh, you apply directly to the DMR. We will direct you to go and consult with the landowner or the lawful occupier of the land, including the interested and affected parties, but you apply through the DM. We are the custodian of the mineral resources of South Africa. But however, when you do that, when you uh, put together your application, you need to go to your nearest deeds office and get the title deeds. You can get the title deeds as long as you have the description of the property. They can print it out for you for 35 rand. mistaken maybe that's a long time ago. so you don't need to have a title days you can apply to my farm as davana or to somebody else farms we will direct you as the dmr that go and consult now that we've accepted your application fantastic that um, answer the question? yes i think it does um the other question is does one require to get new prospecting um, permit if it was issued but the person whom it was registered under is late I'm assuming the late day is in the person that was registered under has um, passed on. Um, so does the next person so, wants to transfer it to his or her ownership? Correct, yes. Do they need to, re to actually get a new permit? Or can they still use the one to the person that has um, passed on? It's, it's, it's a tough one when somebody has passed on because if somebody has passed on and there is nothing happening on the area, uh, we have got some timelines for the uh, prospecting rights. We give it for a period of five years and you can renew it for a period of three years. Then if it lapses, if it expires, it becomes automatically available. But you can't transfer it without... Uh, the owner's consent. But normally when we give it, when you draft the contract, when we issue the prospecting right, we write you as the owner, including the successors to the title. 
so you can talk to the family members because they are successors to the title. So you can negotiate with those who are within that family. If it is a, a personal thing like a family, not a company, because even if it is a company, but if it is run by some uh, an individual, then you can go to the what you call to the immediate family members. But if it is a big company, then uh, obviously some other people will be there. But thank you very much. You can't transfer it automatically. Yeah, you need consent. Pardon? Okay. Um, awesome. Do you so, need further clarification? Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, happiness. Um, there's been some comments actually, not necessarily questions for Mr. Ali Chaba. So the one was that it was a great presentation and encouraging background that has brought you this far. The youth can follow your footsteps and encouragement to reach to maximize their um, potential. But there's also a, actually a comment as well. Great initiative there, Mr. Chaba. I will definitely get in contact um, with you as an engineer myself with vested interest in mining and construction. So I'll also just try and see through to see if there's any questions also directed to Mr. Michaba um, as well. And in the meantime, I'll just continue skimming through the questions going down. Um, the next question is from Amanda. The question is, uh, where, can I, where can we get a list of new mines to be opened? And where can we access information about mines that need to be rehabilitated? Uh, that's a bit difficult, yeah. Uh, can, can you hear me? Yes, I can, I can hear yeah, you. I've missed it, yeah. Um, it's a bit difficult. We don't have a list of uh, uh, available, what you call, spaces where there are no uh, uh, licenses or companies which wants to mine or who wants to, who are busy operating there. Normally, what we usually advise people to do is to look for a property, whether they are looking for diamond or sand or gold or limestone or coal. You look for a property, you say that there is no mining there. Then you need to take maybe just one small coordinate using a cell phone and come to us at the regional office. If it is in Northwest, you will go to Klexdorp. If it is in Houghton, you'll go to Bramfonte. Limpopo, you'll go to Blukwani and ask one of our guys who is referred to as the mineral information management officer. So they have got a database of all the applications. They've got a map of all the applications that are available, those um, spaces which are still available. Yeah. So they can be able to tell you whether, yes, you can apply to that one. Yeah. So that one, is, it, it can be done on, and it's, we leave it to the, what you call to the individual to go and search. We don't search for the, we, we don't have a list where, which we can publish maybe on the newspaper or uh, anywhere else and say, these are the, uh, the available spaces where people can, can, can apply. At the moment, the system doesn't allow that, yeah, our Samrat system, but it is getting some improvement. And I hope that in future, people will, go, will be able to go online on our portal system, this Samrat online and be able to check. But at the moment, it doesn't allow that. So. An individual must go and look for a place by him or herself, yeah. And go to the specific regional office to, to do the verification. Thank you very much um, for that. So there was a question on the, the steel master plan. Okay. The question was, it was actually from Libuani, with reference to the latest published steel master plan, what are the opportunities for the youth? Thank you, uh, Kondwani. I did respond to the question in the chat, but probably it will benefit other people who are listening. The Minister of uh, Trade, Industry and Competition a week or so ago launched the Steel Master Plan. The basis of the Steel Master Plan is to ensure that we support the declining demand of steel in the economy. There are 75 deliverables that have been identified in the Steel Master Plan and one of the projects under the Steel Master Plan, I saw there was also a comment in the Q&A around the mining supply codification project. That is one of the 75 identified activities in the Steel Master Plan. 
the project seeks to digitize the mining supply. So in essence, we want to identify firstly by coding the products that are being supplied into the mining space and then furthermore identify localization opportunities. The biggest problem we're trying to resolve is that uh, mining companies across, they call products in different names. So they'll call an LHD in Anglo, a different product, for example, in Impala. So we're trying to address that issue so that we are able to identify the opportunities. So the opportunities that are identified in the steel master plan will still be linked to the mining equipments themselves. So we're going to be after we do the codification process of the products, we are going to identify pilot products that we are going to group for localization. So there will be opportunities, but they are centered around procurement in the mining space. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for the response. So the other question is from um, Homoteng. So it says um, to, the, to the DMRE vision 2020 and beyond, if this is not covered in the presentation, I'd like to know what is the require what or what the requirements are for first time entrants in terms of um, land or farms equipment, licensing, and business plan. You may go ahead and unmute yourself. Yes, I'm unmuted, yes. Uh, the requirements, if one wants to get assistance from those uh, categories of support that I've outlined, um, I think the first thing may be, if you want assistance to obtain a mining permit, you will need to identify the property or the asset by yourself where you intend to to exploit or to mine that mineral. Let's say maybe uh, you live in a rural area and then there is an open area where there is sand. You call us at the regional office and say, no, I need to mine sand. Uh, you need to be a bona fide uh, citizen of South Africa for small scale mining. It's earmarked only for South Africans here. And um, we will go there and make some assessment, take coordinates, draw the sketch plan, or maybe before we draw the sketch plan, we will verify it with the Council for Geoscience because the Council for Geoscience or the Geological Survey, as they used to call it, uh, is a parastatal. They report to the Minister of uh, Mineral Resources. So we have got access from the DMR side to go and do the verification of whether the mineral that you're looking for is there, be it coal, diamond, platinum, or any other mineral for that matter. So that's the first in terms of the, what you call. So you need to identify the area by yourself. Yeah. Uh, that is a qualification. Yeah. You can't just come to us and say, I need to mine. What is it that you want to mine? Where do you want to mine it? Yeah. So that is a precondition. So if you've got a license, yes, you are free to come to us and say, yes, I have done the what you call the, 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 the what they call the quotations for the machines for mining. I need a front end loader. I need an excavator. I need a way bridge. I need this and that. I've done the quotation and this is the total, I need assistance, then we will evaluate it and respond appropriately in terms of the machines and, uh, and equipment, machinery and equipment. Uh, have I covered it or did I leave something out? Yes, I think you have covered it. Thank you very much. Right. So we actually close to the end of the program. Um, again, what I've mentioned was that with all the questions that were not answered, there will be typed responses to these questions that will then be shared on social media, as well as on the websites that I did um, announce earlier on. So we need to continue this engagement and remember the hashtag is um, Youth in Mining 2021. So if there's any questions that were not addressed, you're welcome to follow up with us so that you can get the answers to those questions. Similarly, presentations and recordings will be shared so that you can also have the opportunity to contact the panelists directly to um, further engage. I think in terms of um, just closing this session, I'd like to thank um, the, the panelists for availing themselves today for um, this specific session. And I'd like to also thank you all participants for making time to be part of um, this engagement as well. Most importantly, the Department of Trade, Industry and um, competition, as well as the Mineral Department of Mineral Resources and Energy. 
also all the supporting partners, um, proudly South African, as well as the SIMM as well for allowing us to participate uh, in this engagement. So I'd like to thank everyone and definitely keep the conversations going. See you soon. Thank you so much. Program director.